My guest is a stand-up comedian from Seattle. His dry bar comedy special has over 20 million views, and his new special, For the Wrong Reasons, was released by the Laugh Button Comedy Network. I'm excited to welcome Andrew Rivers. Hi. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Hey, what a professional intro from yeah, dude. from from uh, from a non-professional. Oh God, <laughs> just getting all the shots just in. Just kidding. We get I, started. I don't know. You know, I I I gotta get fast and loose with it. Yeah, man. How you been? Pretty good. Well, it depends on the day, but you know this this journey of comedy is so uh, the emotional mood swings are wild and spectacular you know so yeah. like some days i'm i'm going like i'm so fucking good i'm i'm a genius i'm working so the voice hard of a generation yeah i am i'm an icon <laughs> and then like a couple hours later i'll be like i'm i'm not doing anything i'm a piece of shit i suck I, i'm terrible yeah, it's but- so humbling you know at all stages of the of the path of like working on new jokes and being like i have jokes that work all the time i could do those all the time yeah and then eating shit and then feeling like i'm accomplished i've got some gigs booked i'm doing stuff and then and then you realize like you know it's just so it ebbs and flows so much yeah dude i i had a just i was actually thinking of you on my drive back because you you talked to me about just like touring all over the country and i did uh notches this past weekend in it's like probably four hours kind of like near Packwood. That's the name of the shit. town? Yeah, Notch. Okay. It's like a mountain. All right. And no cell service when you go <laughs> up there. And it was it was a great gig. But then I did a, cunt, or a golf course down in Chehalis. Yeah. And it was just like, I don't know. And you have it, to make both of those towns laugh, right? Yeah. That's what's amazing is those are wildly different people wildly different life experiences wildly different expectations well, from what a comedy show after should the be. show the first one the whole mountain i guess is like known for being a swingers community ah. and like everybody came out to the show <laughs> so it's just like i i i didn't know that going into it but mm. luckily my stuff plays well to that demographic. yeah 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 <laughs> so well do you you do have that new joke about like swingers club yeah yeah, yeah. we'll see how that one ends All up right. i still gotta go to portland on that uh, before we dive into, like, I got a bunch of questions for you, but right. if you are watching us on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe, notifications bell. If you have a question for Andrew or myself, make sure to throw that in there on the bottom. It helps us quite a bit, as Brandon White, my buddy, always says with the algorithm. Oh, yeah. Um, Pray also, to the algorithm, gods. <laughs> yeah, you Sacrifice. know, you're, you're all <laughs> Come over on, but social. Every, every description of every video is like, just like it, leave a comment for the algorithm gods. Anything, like, yeah. And then we also did set up a Patreon for the page. Uh, it's uh, patreon.com slash F and F pod. Uh, if you can sign up, support us. That helps a lot. If you're listening, go check that out. But let's dive into your stuff. And the um, money is going well used, I will say. Just this directly good equipment to that. Yeah. And, and paying me. I wasn't going <laughs> to yeah. bring that up again. Uh, it's a little light, I noticed, yeah. the envelope. But uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the thing about big bills is they're pretty light. <laughs> okay, good, good. But uh, no, I, I anytime I get a comic on, I try and, I know. and do it. So it's it. I mean, it's your time and all that shit. But you you've been on. Are you touring right now? Or are you back from tour? Because I just talked. It's to, a never ending tour. <laughs> I think in my I think in my level, you know, I'm kind of in this. I'm trying to break through. Like I've I've got. I mean, it's hard to self. Uh analyze i guess you know other people can put you in categories better than you can i think because obviously i think i'm the voice of a generation (laughs) and i think i'm a genius every other day so and then i also think i'm a piece of shit and i can't believe you know it's just comedy i know like i've been getting a lot of messages like you've inspired me but like just from comedian friends and I appreciate it, but I also go like, "What do you? I don't think I'm that. Uh, you got the wrong hero. These are not the people I <laughs> yes, want DMs yeah. from." <laughs> well, yeah, but it's fine. It's just like get better heroes, you yeah. know. Um, <laughs> well, I think yeah. there's that piece of it too, where you see somebody uh, that's like geographically located where you're at yeah. and shit. Yeah, and like if this person's doing this, I could possibly. That's been my biggest motivation through my entire career. Honestly, is like, 
dry bar offered me the special and they were like, it's gotta be really clean. And I was like, I don't think I can do it. And then Billy Anderson, who was newer in comedy than me, still pretty good comic. He filmed one. Yeah. And I was like, all right, you can do it. Yeah. I was like, let me know. And he was like, it was pretty good. And I was like, if this fucking guy can do, I mean, like, I think I'm better than that. How much did that help you? Like, was it quite a big of a bit of a bump or was it? Yeah. I mean, it got me a manager. It got me almost on TV. I mean, that's kind of a wild story too. Um, I feel like I bring it up on every podcast, but yeah, I mean, the dry bar thing was real and, and it was also like income and it was like, and it also showed me like the change. They, they were the first ones on it. Dry bar was posting these vertical videos. They were three minutes at the time. Cause you know, that's what was favorable for the algorithm, mm-hmm. but you know, they would cut up these videos and then you, it, it started to make sense. It would click for me to be like, Oh, 80% of people are using Facebook on their phone, so why don't we format the video vertically? That makes a lot of sense. And did you just kind of figure that out? Yeah, I mean, there's also, like, Gary V is a big guy that uh, Gary Vaynerchuk is, like, a motivational speaker slash entrepreneur slash... Yeah, I know. Yes, right. but for the audience. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I know you're a genius, well, you're, yeah, uh, man, just voice I, of a generation, <laughs> but, uh, you know... But anyway, he he kind of my big joke is that like he he was on a podcast one day talking about Facebook ads and he was like, if Facebook ads can convince people to vote for Trump, surely you can sell tickets to your band or whatever. And I was like, well, that's kind of offensive and a good idea. Yeah. And so I set up some test shows and I tried it and one sold out and then I lost all the money I gained on the other <laughs> one on the second one. And I was like trying to figure out the difference. And that's how the whole, that was like 2018, 2019. Yeah, I think when I started, you were starting to do that mm-hmm. stuff. Because you had you had gone all over the country prior to that. 50, I mean, like, there are 50 states. I've, I've performed in 45 of them, I think. And mostly by car? Yeah. I mean, that was the early, that was the first eight years of my career is like, you could still get middle gigs, you know, you could still go feature at a funny bone. I never really got in with the funny bones, but the point remained, there was enough indie clubs. There was enough clubs that were like, Hey, we'll give you 500 and a hotel for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Oh, if I string a couple of those together, I can just drive even at least and like crash on friends' couches. And you just meet homies that have like a Monday night show for 50 bucks and they got whatever. Or they just got a bar, you know. It's just about being immersed in comedy, really. Do you? Is there any aspect of that you wish you would have done differently? Yeah. Like, I mean, the whole thing. Really? You know, I mean, it's very stupid to to, you know, one of the things I've been telling myself, like, kind of over COVID, is like to motivate my was like I ruined my life to get to do this. I might as well get really good at it. Mm-hmm. And so, like. Yeah, I mean, I would meet girls and then I'd be like, hey, I got to go on a two month road trip, you know, like just stay single and don't fuck anybody. And like, no, they're not going to do that. Yeah. Or they. And you're not either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no one wanted to fuck me anyway, but that's, you know, it's besides, they have offers, you know, they can I actually. Mean, you were on the road. I'm sure you did sure, all right. You know, but well, that's a that's a fun story, podcast story. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so after a while, you just go like. I'm living in a, a Craigslist house that I rented. Uh, like I rent the room in the house, some random guy's house. And it was like 400 bucks a month here. It was in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. In Kirkland. I was like a mile up the street from laughs. Yeah. That's how I got in with them. Such good graces is that even if I had nothing going on, I just showed up. Cause I was like, it's a mile up the street. Yeah. Let me put in FaceTime with the club. And then all the time, Dave would just be like, eh, just do a set. And that's the kind of guy he is, oh, you, you know? Reps, and yeah. that is a little bit of going away now, for better or worse. Better for the club, certainly. Mm-hmm. It's better. It's a better, you know, if if a club is more scheduled and more strict, that's kind of better. At the same time, there are advantages to a a comedy club owner that's like, I forgot to book a host. What are you doing (laughs) every week? And I would just get on stage. And I told him, like, I live five minutes away if it's an emergency. And so, you know, 
that's kind of how things got going. Yeah. No, I, I was definitely in that class at the time when, and it, dude, when you get those consistent reps, you yeah. learn a lot quickly. Yeah. But w- back to like the, those eight years when you're doing the road. Yeah. What, like, I'm in a position where I'm kind of looking at potentially doing that. And yeah. Selfishly, I'm yeah. curious. Like, oh, what, yeah. What do you. I mean, to do it differently now would be to. I would do more of what you're doing. You're already do. You're doing the things. I would just do it. You know, I would. I think I would just go work harder. I think I would write more. I think I would post more clips. I think I would. You know, I would try to skip the line earlier, because those get. You know, the hard part of this career is money, right? Is we spent. We're. You know. I kind of rants with Luke Severide about it where I'm like, we're wringing every single dollar we can out of this, you know. And when you, when you like, people complain about the clubs don't pay or this doesn't pay or whatever and, and, or enough or whatever. And then you look at, like, when you produce a show and you go, this is what I spent on ads, this is the venue, this is the cut for the... Co-. Like, there's just not a lot of money to go around. Yeah. So, like... When you can become your own economy, when you can post reels and make a podcast that people want to listen to and, and get it. Or pay on, yeah. you know, whatever those of you watching is. Yeah. I mean, that's that, that stuff really helps. So, like, you know, again, I don't know. I might do it. I might not go around the country just because it's 100 bucks in gas to drive to Minnesota or to whatever. To be more strategic about it. I think it. I would be more... Like finding stuff in town, which is kind of what I'm transitioning to this year, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's the hope. But Dude, I just like, I got a bunch of stuff on the road and I, Gabe Rutledge has been yeah. on. Yeah. And I've had a, f- a few people that are like just big road guys that have come on. Like, Dude, that had to have like ruined your body. Yeah. I mean, I slept in a Corolla for years, you know, <laughs> off and on. Like, how did you do it? I had a sleeping bag and a, a pillow. Yeah. And I would just curl up in the back seat, you really? know. And you I wouldn't do it, like the front seat lay down. I never really it wasn't comfortable enough for me, I think. I finally think I figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, I got a sleeping pad. Yeah. And I lay it down on the passenger seat and and lay it down like all the seat yeah, all the yeah, way back. Yeah. So my head's still up. I don't get that weird like yeah. if you're sleeping on unlevel ground. Yeah. Yeah. And it's enough spaced like side to side where all you're right. not I I crashed on it like for two hours yeah, yesterday at some yeah. weird hotel. But yeah. It's it's just the strangest like I went to a Denny's yesterday for like two hours to just do some writing and mm-hmm. like listen to sets and like you've done that for ten years where you just like I mean are you happy with that decision? Do you like where where are you at with it? <laughs> Am I happy with my decisions? I mean, don't get into comedy in the first place. I mean, uh, uh yeah, I mean, I I I did what I thought I had to do and it it was at the time. You know, there wasn't this the, the internet wasn't the the move. There wasn't like you know what was the was, play when you started that i think when i started everyone just thought like oh you just get on leno or you get a letterman or you whatever you get on tv tv helps you sell tickets yeah and then and so it was sort of like preparing, that was the big yeah preparing myself to get in with tv and like in with these and then but again Drybar was like the first company to kind of just make their own thing. Mm -hmm. And they showed everyone else what was possible, you know? And so shout out as much as I make fun of Drybar, way to go. They figured it out. And then you, and then we all realized at the same time, oh, TV is not, is losing all of its relevance. Netflix was popping, you know? And so it was like, I don't know if TV is really that important anymore. And now, as we see, it's almost not important at all. So Yeah, it seems like the niche thing, like figuring out what your niche is, is what's most important. Then you can like target those people. Yeah. I just hate, like for this podcast, we have no niche. I no. mean, I, I, like I yeah. said to you ahead yeah. of time, it's like, just bring a story Gambling, on. sex, I don't yeah, know. Just yeah. whatever, whatever yeah. you want to tell a story about. But it's, 
when you go super niche like that, like I don't want to be the blank person. I don't want to be the yeah. This is the guy you go to for this. The thing. whiskey and, so, and the whatever and the yeah. I get it. I also see advantages to that, and also like, I don't think that we're as cornered as we think we are. If you become, uh, you know, the bubbly podcast, you know, <laughs> yeah, if, if bubble. like if bubble, sorry. <laughs> New shoes on the wick and I wake new shoes on the whip and I wake up to bubbly. Um I uh, yeah, I don't I don't think we're as trapped as we are in our mind because I think it's so hard it's so hard to get that attention on purpose yeah. that even if you attempt to be the niche guy, you're still gonna fail at that. Are you any niche guy right now? I don't now? think so. But you you use quite a bit of your stuff on facebook and like you yeah. have people coming out to shows yeah. like what does that model look like for you i mean again i you know if you look at my instagram story last night i'm crying about you know i'm making fun of myself i'm i'm watching i'm watching the people that i perceive to be on my level comedically or like career, you know, there are several steps like savvy stavvy baby guy where he's like posting these funny videos promoting his dates. And I'm like, I got to get better at putting my face on camera. Cause all, cause I'm so, my comedy is very like written and perfectly, you know, in my mind, it's very structured. And so like, if I'm just doing my face to a camera and kind of rambling, I'm like, that's not that good. Like I would like in my ideal world, I would think of a joke, go tell an audience the joke, get it, getting a huge response and then post that stuff. But you, it's hard to get on stage all the time. The jokes don't work immediately. The jokes take seven times for you to not fuck it up. The you know, it's expensive to hire a camera crew. It's expensive to film your own thing and then spend eight hours editing it. It's just a different skill set. It's too. hard. Yeah. That's so, why I like doing this quite a bit yeah. is you get to flex those other things. Absolutely. It's stand up is this one thing and it's mm -hmm. this being, but like it's not the only way to get right. your jokes out. Right. And, and you've so done a I lot think of like, stuff yeah, and, well, not a ton. I I had ideas. I again I just didn't I was so poor that I was like I was a one man operation. I didn't really even have because I was very antisocial, I didn't have like a crew like a com like some comedians have like They're, a posse of like yeah, five yeah. kids that they all hang out and work on stuff together and that's awesome. I didn't really have that. And even then it was like I was friends with Adam who owned who was starting to own comedy clubs. So he was going in a different direction and then Corey and I sort of became homies, but I was working on this like I had this idea of like don't quit your night job cuz people would always come up to me and go I could never be a comedian. I'm like, I could never work at a bank, you know. First of all, I couldn't pass a drug test, but yeah. <laughs> I, could, I could never do that or whatever it is. Yeah. And so I had this idea of like, and it's still on my YouTube, but like I would attempt other people's job and I would like interview them, find out what it is. You know, like my friend was a boxer and I was like, oh, that'll be fun. And so I just in ask him interesting things about boxing. And then I get in the ring and he just lets me hit him and laughs at me. And, yeah. And then. Did he light you up at the end? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, and then my friend, I made friends with John Ryan, who was a punter for the Seahawks yeah, yeah. at the time. He was married to Sarah Colonna. And so through osmosis of meeting him, I'm like, I have this idea where you kick me punts. Because I read this article that was like, punting is so much more complicated than you think it is. And I'm like, that's cool to me. Yeah. The stuff that people do, think they know about but have no idea about. That's yeah. always been fascinating to me. So I did like 10 episodes of that. I did one where I was on the street trying yeah, to sell. Yeah, I think I saw yeah, that yeah. one. You're, you're and like Corey's Mark. wife drove by me at the time. Really? I was like, is Andrew doing okay? You know? And I was like, I don't know, I'm just an idiot trying to... And there's like drug dealers and there's, you know, there was not, <laughs> it was not a good idea. Yeah. But... Did it end up doing all right online? Not even really. Yeah, you know, yeah. a couple thousand views. And I had no... I had I didn't I didn't know how to promote. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just thought like I'll just make the stuff and figure it out later, which is great cuz I attempt attempt anything, you know, try anything, try yeah. everything, you know. Uh at the same time, don't take pride in being like, "Well, I'm going to 
I'm just going to stick this, you know, like figure it out. Yeah. So, I That's where I, I'm like struggling a little bit because I do think you have to make that attempt. Mm-hmm. But if you look at something where it's like, how is this going to be marketed or sold? Like for me creatively, I have to start with like the idea yeah, first yeah. and then figure out how right. you would do that. If you do it the other way around, it's, it's not going to work. It it's not going to be any good. It just is not. You know, you do things podcast, for dude. the right reasons. For the- <laughs> yeah, you, like it's such a corny saying. Yeah, but if you're trying to reverse engineer, I've talked about this too. Authenticity, right? The audience knows when you're being authentic. They don't. It's a subconscious thing. I was telling our friend Courtney Bird. You know, and this is not to make kind a of, friend, yeah, yeah friend, a and not. You know, but she's doing this, uh, she does this laugh or this giggle or whatever, you know, and sometimes it, go, it the crowd really likes it and mm-hmm. sometimes they fucking hate it. And I kept like trying to tell her, like, sometimes you're forcing the giggle, but and the audience doesn't know that they know that, but they know that. Yeah. And so they go like, eh, it's kind of weird. They sniff it out. Yeah. And so like at times, you know, if you're going, I'm going to start a whiskey podcast and I'm going to like, people are going to know that you're full of shit. So. But if you're like super rad on the shit that you're talking about, like I like punting, yeah. like not, yeah. Punt, but yeah, like, yeah. I mean, the, anything. Like, things that people think they yes. understand, but don't understand yeah. if you can get behind that and then figure out a way to make yeah. it sell. Yeah. That's way better. I still think it was a cool idea. I mean, it's kind of like dirty jobs or like any of those, I like the idea. Joe's think, versus pros. Like, put somebody in an uncomfortable situation and then see how it plays how out, with, you know? You know, Hans, actually, Hans Kim, I worked with him recently, and he we were talking about, like, people doing stand-up for the algorithm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, Jesse Warren was there, yeah. too, and we termed it algorithmic yeah. comedy, yeah. where you're like, everything is, you're just trying to talk about trending stuff. And and it's weird, yeah. at least when I've gone to New York, like the whole, New York is so weird right now. It's like, everybody's trying to, uh, like I thought New yeah. York was, hey, we're going there to get better yeah. at standup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the new LA. Yeah. It's everybody's shooting stuff to get uh, Instagram famous and, and, I mean, that's that's one of my questions for you is like, you never went to New York or L.A. like long term. Yeah. Why didn't you do that? Um, is a great question. I. Um, a lot of reasons. I kind of just had a home base here. I was in with the clubs here. They liked me enough. They even as a come up, you know, as a new comedian on the six years, the first six years, they were giving me spots. I was working everywhere. There used to be more clubs here. There used to be two parlors. There used to be a Seattle Underground. There used to be, you know, there used to be a lot more work. Mm-hmm. So that is part of the thing where I I planted myself here, where I was like. I can make, I can profit, you know, I can make money, but I can profit in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Like I can take home money to pay bills. That guy or that you live with. Yeah. <laughs> so like that was part of it. And the other part is a little fear of like not of stagnation because a lot of my peers moved to LA and then moved back. Mm-hmm. And it was as I was on the, you know, you're influenced by the people you look, who you perceive as being a level or two above you, right? Yeah. So like all these guys, Brian Moot or like Monica Nevy or even Mike Coletta or people move to LA for like two years and then they they kind of get stuck and they're not advancing and they're also not growing as comedians because they're, you feel like you have to kill every night because your sets are at the improv, your sets are at the laugh factory. You're just showcasing. You're just showcasing. And there is stories of like random guy walks in and books me on the tonight show or whatever. And so that's what you think is going to happen in LA. So you're like, I constantly got to be doing my best stuff. Yeah. So I'm you're sure not you're surrounded by the nicest of people too. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. That they're all be- watching they're all you. Your while best yeah, yeah. Oh, it's awful. And so, Part of me thought, like, I'm just not going to... My best chance is to get really good at comedy. Mm -hmm. And so if you reverse engineer that, where can I get on stage often 
that I feel comfortable enough failing, and that's laughs, you know? Yeah. So... Here's a question, though. Do you think not having, like, that crew, not having that, like... When you're in New York, you typically kind of have to crew up yeah. because you're not going to get opportunities if you're by yourself. Mm-hmm. Do you think not having that crew has hurt your comedy? No, I you think, think so. I think, I mean, if anything, it benefited me because I developed a lot of skills on my own and I threw through my own, you know, just uh, through my own hard work and through my own perseverance and determination, literally like you're like I, a lone wolf over a little here. bit, you know, I figured it out, you know, yeah. I figured some stuff out, I think. But you don't think like having other comics that you like those I do have a small, I mean, you know, I have a very small circle now, but it's different. It's not, um, it's not what I would think of what it would have been. And it's now people that, you know, were ambitious and were trying to do different things. You're all doing your own thing. Yeah, but it's, yeah, Corey's doing his theater show and I was trying to do my own tour around the world. Which is a great show if you are looking for stuff in Everett. Was there for New Year's Eve? Corey McKayla was Emery, Everett Comedy Night. Everett Comedy Night. Com. Yep. Yeah. So you're you're more of the hey, I we do our own thing and we build each other up. You know, like I know he's got a show for me once a year or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. even though I probably don't sell enough tickets to justify. Yeah. It, and, you know, and like I don't know. Yeah. And so like, and I, I'm working on stuff, and like, you know, Luke was is the homie, and so like. For the last six months, he's been bitching about his job and he can't whatever. And I'm going and comedy clubs don't pay. And I'm going, yeah, well, you do it on your own, you know. And now he just sold out four shows in a week, you know. Damn. And so he's like, I'm like, cool. So these Facebook ads like that, that's kind of the model you're looking yeah. at. Yeah. And what are the audiences like for stuff like that? Because we use them for our show mm-hmm. locally. Mm-hmm. And the Facebook audience is... It depends. I mean, a lot of times it's really good because they watch your video. You know, we're using a video of us, basically. And so, like, it's been a little different lately. Um, but that could be Facebook has changed. The people are fucking nuts. Uh, you know, they're not reading the descriptions clearly enough. I mean, a lot of things can go into that. But... For the most part, they watch your video and they go, that type of comedy is good enough for me to spend 20 bucks, you know? And then, so then they're at least invested into you, you know? Yeah. Um, What's the downside? Like, what's a bad show look like with that? Because this is basically, like, the model is go to a theater, book it yourself, run Facebook ads with these videos, and then... The so people will to, come. Hopefully. And you can you can build it and they won't come. That's yeah. the part they don't tell you. Um, yeah. So, so a like, bad show is people don't come. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that because you're losing money on like the rent and the ads and travel. So that's why Your you're throwing too. darts. You're just going like, I hope this works. Out. We're doing Texas and it's selling terribly right now. If you're in Texas, yeah, please, yeah, Jack, buy, please buy tickets. I got a buddy in Texas, <laughs> so he might come. So, you know, it's very... Like I, but I also did this Oregon run where three of the shows sold okay, out. Oregon run. Oregon. Okay. Yeah. The way you said that, I was like, you running for Oregon? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I did this run through Oregon where I did four nights in a row, four different cities. And, uh, and like, you know, one of the shows, people are yelling at me the whole time. They're drunk. And there's 200 people. And I'm going, this is not, I clearly tapped into something in the town that they're just like, well, nothing. You know, my joke is that I'm like an Eagles cover band where I'm like, if I go to a small city, I can sell 100 tickets because uh, they're like, nothing else is going on. Mm-hmm. But in a big city, they can just go see the Eagles. Yeah. You know, they're like, you're not the Eagles. So, you know, so I go to Eugene, Oregon, where they're like, nothing happens here. And I sell 200 tickets, 250 tickets or whatever. And I. I'm not crying about I'm getting heckled. People are yelling at me. There's weird shit. But I'm making three grand. So yeah. I'm like, you guys. It's basically yell a whatever. bar show. Though, yeah, it is. Point. Yeah. And so, again, I'm uh, the next night I'm in Bend, Oregon or Portland. People, cr- lots of crowd interaction. But again, I still think that a lot of that is my fault where I'm going. 
in the, you know, I host the show and headline too. That's another thing I learned from Steve Hofsetter, who I tour with a lot, where if you're the guy they paid to see, sometimes you'll open for like celebrities and, and like after 10 minutes, the crowd is kind of like, we love you, but we're here for the puppets. For you sure. Know? Yeah, like, yeah. Get, just get on with it. And so you, so in order to fight that, you know, comics used to do their, like the headliner would go from backstage, like make an announcement, like give it up for my friend and make it real personal. And Steve took that to the next level where he's like, I'll just host the show. I'll just come out and do 10 to 15 up top. And now they see me, we interact, we have some fun. I tell some jokes, they get them warmed up. And now my feature has an easy ride. And as the middle act, it was like, as the opener, there was, it was a two man show at the time. So you're like, Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. The crowd's Super warmed smooth. up. It's smooth. They saw and, their celebrity guy. Yeah, and they get a, a little break before yeah. he goes up and headline. And so perfect, you know? And so, like, I'm trying to copy that a little bit. There's less name recognition for me because they just clicked a thing and bought tickets. They're not like, Ed Rivers is coming to town, you yeah. know? But, you know, I still think I could do a better job of hosting and letting them know. Steve has a reputation of a heckler destroyer guy. Yeah. So people come and he goes, don't heckle, you know why. And then they're like, oh. <laughs> they freeze And up. they just don't. They're the best crowds you'll ever want. I actually had a bunch of questions about Steve. Okay. You had worked with them. Like, can you explain to the audience who Steve Hofstetter is and like how you guys met? He's a comedian. He's a hustler. He's a entrepreneur. He's all those things. All He has, you know... He's got an MBA too, right? He's got a what? MBA, uh, Masters in Business Administration. I think so. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen it. I but think I saw. I'm sure, yeah. he says lots of things on his website. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, he's just like he's a very business oriented yeah. comedian, and from the start, um, or maybe the since I've known him, but like again, part of my crew was Steve, where it was like he would just call me and go like. Hey, I need an open. You know, I met him at Tacoma Comedy Club. He was headlining a show. Adam booked him because he had a huge mailing list at the time, back when mailing list was effective. Mm -hmm. And um, Adam's just kind of like, hey, this guy, you might... Adam was really smart. He was really connected. He knew who to book. I would just booked you and all my friends, and we would have went out of business in three months, which is what every comedy club that is started by a comedian usually turns into. But... I meet Steve, we're hanging out. He owns a comedy club and he says, there's all these comics hanging out like after the show, like, oh, let me like talk to this guy and like, you know, get to get in the inside scoop. And he said, uh, oh yeah, our comedy club, if you just go to the website, there's a form you fill out with, put your video in there and we'll, that's how you get booked. And I was like, well, that's convenient. So I was like, I don't even have to bug this guy. So then... The next day, I think it was a couple days later, but the next day he was at a, he was at Laughs and he was doing like two nights, you know, and he forgot like a sign for his merch at the club. And so I, I lived up the street, so I just brought him his laminated merch sign. Mm -hmm. And he was like, dude, that's so nice. And I was like, well, yeah, nice thing to do, but you left it. And then he was just, we have just became homies and like, he, uh, I went to his website and I filled out the thing and he called me up 10 minutes later and he's like, you could have just asked me. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I just want to go through the proper channels, you know, like I don't expect any special treatment. And he goes, I'll book you, but, um, I just don't want you to tell one joke and it's your choice. You don't have to, you, you know, you're, you could certainly, I just think it's a dumb joke. I think it's terrible. I think you but I just don't want it at my club. You're you're free to say no, and that's all your prerogative. I'm like, uh, yeah, what's the joke? And, you know, I hate this joke. I can't, uh, tell Do me that. Do you remember what it was? Oh, yeah, yeah it was... Yeah. Uh, um, uh, my girlfriend posted on Facebook, back to long and dark, and it feels so good. And I was like, she's cheating on me. And then I get home, and uh, she just got a new haircut, you know? She wasn't even cheating me with a black guy. He was Asian or whatever, you know, some... Some terrible thing yeah, about yeah. Asians have small dicks. Yeah. And he was just like, come on, just you're hacky. It's better. You can do better. Yeah. And I was like, hey, fuck yeah, I hate that joke. I don't care, you know? And he's like, all right. 
And so that was like the start of like, that club was in Indianapolis. So I booked this uh, club in Minnesota. Wait, wait, wait. So he he ran the club in Indy? Yeah, he booked it, yeah. Was it... Was it uh, Morty's? Oh, it was more. It wasn't. Isn't there another one? Crackers. Is yeah. It? Yeah. Does he? Did he work there? Um, I don't know. I know that ever since I've known him, they they hate each other because you know. Dude, as soon as I you open swear, a rival club, this this yeah. just hit me now. All right. When I went to school, um, in Indiana, I went to Indianapolis. Yeah. It was like a two hour drive. I went to a show. I'm pretty sure I saw Steve Hofstetter in like 2010 wow. opening at that club. I'm sure. At Crackers. Yeah. Which is a great club. Like sure. I, I only went that one time. Yeah. But I, I, I've That's been funny. always trying to That's remember if he has a joke about um, like student loans or had a joke about student loans and being unemployed and shit. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't, it might, but... I'd have to... I, dude, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. swear right, it, was, hey. it was a redheaded guy yeah, with glasses. Yeah, like yeah. It probably was him. So um, he like he has this machine now though. Yeah. So like yeah. for anybody on YouTube and stuff, if you search Steve Hostet or like mm -hmm. tons of stuff comes up. And didn't you say like now when you have been on tour with him, it's like a full operation? Oh yeah. I mean, again, I figured out this like Facebook ad thing in like 2019, and I sent it to a bunch of my friends to be like. I I kind of figured this out, but everyone else go try it and see what you can do with it, you know? And like Steve Steve was already doing that without advertising. He was just getting name recognition and tweets and all the free advertising you can do. Mm -hmm. And we were doing like we did a tour through through England and through Europe for two to three weeks. And they were all like hundred seaters and like, you know, it was a struggle. But, was it fun though? Yeah, it was great. But then when I sent him that, he just poured gasoline on it because he already had a huge following. He just couldn't figure out how to reach them really. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, 2020, he had this idea of like, oh, we'll set up this big tour and then everything went to crap. And then as soon as COVID ended or restrictions ended or whatever, just hit the ground running. We were all, at first, we were all packed into an SUV, mm -hmm. and it was like, you know, we got six merch bags and luck, you know, yeah. <laughs> and we're driving around in circles for three weeks. And then I was yelling at him, and I'm like, get a bigger thing, you know. And then he bought this school bus because he was trying, again, the cheap man pays twice is, what, is a fun one because it's this tiny, like, small school bus and it's kind of rackety and it's not comfortable and he like redoes the interior and he's like this will be like a cool the idea was and to like not to practical. sleep on the yeah, way to the yeah. gigs and it's right? just not practical you know and, like it wasn't comfortable it was bad it was noisy it was loud yeah. you know Did, so do you guys end up paying for hotels still? yeah we would get a hotel anyway yeah and so i'm like this isn't even any more com like get the SUV back. I'd rather be crammed <laughs> in the SUV. And, and was it all of you in one room in a hotel? No, it you was, you know, how many people are there on tour nowadays? I mean, two openers, a tour manager, uh, a headliner and, and the, the artist. So like, you know, five or six people. So it'd be like two, two. And then the headliner gets his own room. Yeah. And so, then he finally, uh, we were driving, you know, I was already kind of yelling at him about, I like sent a big email, like the group all got together and they were like, how do we tell him we hate this? And I was like, I'll send the email, yeah. you know? And, um, you know, again, it's, it's very funny. I love the empathy of these situations where I'm like, sometimes you hear these me too stories, not to diminish any of that, but you're like, how can you take that shit from your boss? I mean, what, you know? And then I'm on tour with a guy and I'm like, everyone's like, can you send the email? We're scared. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm scared too. Yeah. You know, like this is my money. I don't want to fuck this up. But I just write this email like the bus isn't safe. It's annoying. It's terrible. Blah, blah, blah. And then finally he was kind of like, well, you know, that's too bad. I don't care. And which is fine. And then we were at, we were staying at Weston's, you know, and we're parking this shitty school bus. <laughs> And someone rolls up with a Mercedes van, Sprinter van, that's all decked out with LEDs and 
So I like took a photo of that, sent it to the group, and I'm like, this is what we should be doing. And then literally the next day, he was like Googling Mercedes Sprinter vans, and then he found one, and then it was like a six-month wait just to get it. And then you have to trick it out a little bit, you know, make it more comfortable. But again, um, yeah, it's a whole operation. There's f- four cameras every show. He's got an iPad, iPod with with his pre-show music. He's got, you know, he's got a tour manager. He's got people. It's a it's a whole thing. Yeah, and it's awesome to be a part of that because he does so many things well, and there are things that I think I would do better. But that's what I, that's, you know, when you learn from being on the thing, you're like, when I'm in charge, I'm going to do things better, you know, and hopefully one day I can get to, you know, I've done a few of these runs. He does six nights a week nonstop throughout the, you know, and even this year he's doing less of them. But do you think that stuff, though, takes away from your ability to be funny? What do you mean? Like, the more you're focusing on the business stuff, the less you get to focus on the. Sure. But what is the, what is you know what's the alternative i don't i'm trying to figure that out yeah i mean like i guess like if you're one of those people that does uh get a tour manager and all that shit like you can just focus on a little bit but you're still i mean the tour manager is reporting to you yeah so he's kind of like, what do I do? And you're it's like, it's just so it's, hard. Like it's it, very hard. The business aspect of this and the comedy, yeah, they completely contrast. And and that's the thing too is like I talked about this a little bit on my my podcast, but I was like, which is Andrew's crap. I'm not even promoting it. I like, don't. <laughs> I'm like so anti promotion, but I needed a thing to to empty my brain into. But um, but like. The cool thing about those Steve tours is six nights a week, you're in front of an amazing crowd and you, you're doing 15. So I'm like, I can do eight old, eight new and um, just work out tons of bits and, and tweak night to night and change this. And, and then I was on a headline tour with Luke where we did four nights in Oregon. And I, I still made little tweaks, but it's harder to tweak a 45 minute set. And also... I'm I'm worrying about ticket sales. I'm lo- I'm logistics. I'm driving. I'm doing all this. Yeah. It's hard. It's the really driving hard. aspect is like it's just hard. The, when you start doing gigs like that, yeah. you're spending most of the time just yeah. getting in the gig. Exactly. And so that's the he, thing. People. Steve has like a whole process where like you get on the bus. Mm-hmm. I think you were telling me, and he's cutting up the video from the last yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. So by the time you get to the next yeah. show, the video from that show is already uploaded well yeah it's uploaded to he has an editor and he has people that are doing that part of the stuff too which he didn't used to have also but but again we as we get money it's used to delegate things you know investing in your own career so um so yeah he's going over that and he's clipping things up and he's and because each opener wants their video and you know so someone's got to do it you know that's fucking so at a certain point you go you know, what's the alternative? You've got, you know, this stuff has to get done. I mean, I, I record shows and then I don't see the video for three weeks. Cause I'm like, I, I already know what happened. I don't want to watch it again. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll put it on a drive somewhere and you know, that space helps sometimes too. Yeah. Like just so you can look at it objectively. Yeah. Cause if you watch something, you just like, you're like, Oh, I crushed. Mm-hmm. And then you like Take, post don't it, lie, man. and then you you come back to yeah, it, yeah. like a couple of weeks after posting. Like, this was why the fuck did yeah, I even yeah, do this? Yeah. I mean, that's stand up in general. Like when you work on a bit, and then you're like, it's it's great, and then a year later, you're like, that was embarrassing, you know. Yeah. But this is the 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 rate of growth in this business is so steep at the very beginning, you know. So, oh, yeah. you know. I look back and watch, you know, my dry bar special. I'm like, well, why did I get so many views? Like, it's really bad. But at the time, I was like, I'm so proud of this. I'm a genius. I'm an icon. I'm a voice of a generation. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. so good. Yeah, four million views. Suck my dick. NBC, here I come, you know. And uh, and so, you know, and then NBC was like, no, thanks. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> and then, we're, we're fine, actually. And then I was like, okay. And so that was what the impetus to like, again, Steve is a guy who's for the most part, not been on TV, 
you know, he's had some TV things. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that we're equals in that. But like not traditional like Fallon or like Netflix or like it's just the posted on YouTube and, and, you know. And he's created his shows for like MLB Network and little things. And he started Laughs, which was a big controversy at the time because it only paid a hundred bucks or something to be on. But it was like on 13 stations at one in the morning, you know. What, was, Laughs TV? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it was a TV show where it was like curated clip comedy. Again, he sees where he's like, if we just post like three minute clips, it just wasn't the right time and the format and the, you know, it was, it was TV. It wasn't the internet, you know? Yeah. It just seems like at least, I mean, you've been doing this way longer than me, but it seemed like there was a huge inefficiency where there was late night and then comedy central in yeah. the early 2000s. Yeah. And then Netflix came in and saw that the market for comedy was underserved. They yeah. put a bunch of money yeah. behind it, probably too much, Yeah, but they became the place that like has specials in competition with HBO. Now that seems to have dialed back and the internet has kind of ramped up, but now there's all this competition on the internet. And I'm like, where does it go from that? Again, one of my favorite things I've learned from from watching Gary V stuff is he, all he talks about is attention. And so you want to focus where where is people's attention and where is the underpriced attention? So for example, me doing my Eagles cover band thing. I'm like, Eugene, that's a huge city without any comedy. Yeah. Bellingham, You great bring it city. to them. So I just go to them, you know? Yeah. So, Stanhope's been doing that for yeah. his entire career, too. I mean, a lot of guys. Yeah. So I just, I what I would push back on is I do think there's value in having that inner circle of comics that you really, like, respect what yeah. they do on stage. Yeah. Uh, can bounce ideas off of them. Mm -hmm. And like without that, I think it can lead itself to bad habits. You get insular and you get, you need outs, you need, you need friends that'll check you, you know, the same way when you're like, when you have a crush on a lady and you're like, oh my gosh, she's the one. And then your friend is like, there's the weird mole. You you know, I mean, anything. (laughs) Like you've got to say weird mole. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I went so, physical, yeah, you yeah, went. Yeah. What I mean, <laughs> that's the difference between yeah, Everett yeah. and uh, a <laughs> suburb kid. Um, so funny. I think her looks aren't as pretty. And you're like, looks? Look, <laughs> she's, she's jacking she's money from us. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Where does it go from here? I think what's interesting is the internet is sort of this, you know, ever expanding universe almost where. There's room for everybody. Yeah. Your podcast does not compete with my podcast. Yeah. If people like yours, they'll like yours. If, if people anything, like mine. It helps. Yeah. Because we know each other. A little bit. It's a huge open space. Would hope so. Yeah. So you can have the cat guy. You can have whatever. I mean, there's people making, you know, people will come out to see who they want to see. Yeah. It's not, they don't have to go to laughs anymore. There's just more competition. So laughs has to book better comedians or whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's just more fair almost. Yeah. Now it is. It's just another network. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. But it, but, but from day, from day zero, you can post something and get a million views. So that's more fair than NBC, you yeah. know, where it was like, like... Unless you look a certain way. I mean, or, I don't know, you know, certainly. Certainly they're doing more of that representation matters. And, and but it But even back then, it wasn't about... It was more, do you look... Are you handsome? Are you like... Sure. Uh, do you fit a category to whatever? So that whole like meeting, checking a box has always been a thing. Yeah. It's just what box yeah. are you trying to check? Sure. So. I don't know. I've never fit in any of the boxes. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I right, almost dude, did. Let's uh, let's jump into the... Do you have a story for me? Oh, sure. Okay, let's do that. I got some story time music that Ooh. we play. And uh, during this, we can't talk, unfortunately. I guess it f- screws it up, according to the editor. But um, yeah, I'll have you do your story. And then anything you want to plug, we'll do that at the Sweet. end. Sweet. Cool, man. It's story time, it's story time with Bad Homie, yeah, it's story time. 
Wow. Yeah. Can't believe you got Usher to record your <laughs> music for you. <laughs> so is uh this is um it's probably like three years into comedy, four years into comedy. I get my first feature weekend at, at Morty's in Indianapolis and I booked like four or five weeks of work, just make it a little circle. And um I'm staying at a hotel. But then the, the very next week, I have to go to Wichita. So I'm going from Indianapolis to Wichita, Kansas. And I have a few days leeway before, you know, I'm allowed at the condo for the. And the owner, Bowers, Chris Bowers, goes, oh, you can just crash at my place. Comics stay here all the time. It's a huge house. And I'm like, cool. I'm kind of a, I like to be away. I kind of like to be alone, you know. It's kind of my like thing. Like your space. Yeah. So he has this loft, which is like above the living room and it's kind of like a hideaway cubby and i'm like that's my shit that's my spot right there so i crash in that spot and all weekend i'm like flirting with this waitress i'm not really flirting with her she's just kind of flirting with me and i'm i'm an idiot i don't really know when women are flirting with me because i just assume they all hate me and so she's super hot i'm this dorky 26 year old i don't know you know and so I'm like, oh, I'm staying at Bauer's place. Uh, you know, if you want to go out, grab a drink. She's like, hell yeah. So one of the days she's like, I'll show you around town. We'll go to my favorite restaurant, whatever. And then we go to this bar and I'm like, uh, or in, in the beginning of the night, I'm like, do you want to drive? Because if I'm going to drink, I probably shouldn't drive. She's like, oh, yeah, it's fine. I didn't know she meant I'll just drive drunk. It's fine. But uh, it is Indiana. It's so. crazy lady. Or wait, is this in which? This is Indiana. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, so I'm staying with the comedy club owner, and uh, he has a gig. He go, he's a he did he still does some motivational speaking for like schools, and so he was like, I got a gig in Ohio. I'm gonna I'm gonna drive back, but I'll probably be gone all night, you know. And uh, I'm like, cool. So me and this chick go out, and we're like having a great time because I also like. You know that feeling where you're like, I, there's no way I'm getting laid, so I'm just going to be natural, and then that is what gets you laid. Yeah. And, you know? So uh, it takes you forever to figure that out, you know? Just, oh, just be myself? I Still don't, don't, I don't know I don't if know. either one of us had that figured out. Listen, you? listen. Uh, you got a, you got a, a girlfriend, <laughs> I'm, I'm, so yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know. Uh, you're doing better than I am, certainly, by any objective measure. So... We get drunk, we come back, and I'm just kind of like hanging. I'm like, she's like, let's open his fridge. She's pouring Patron from his fridge. Oh, shit. And I'm like, this is the guy who owns the company. This is like, you work, he's your boss and my boss. Like, this is bad. She's like, fucking idiot. Don't worry about it. You square loser. And I'm like, all right. So then we go upstairs and we're, you know, I'm like, oh, the YouTube cats, little video. I don't know what to do. <laughs> And so after a while, we start hooking up, and everything's great. And then at, at the end of it, I'm kind of sobering up and like coming. It's like four in the morning, and I'm like coming to my senses. Like I just fucked a waitress in the comedy club owner's house. That's pretty against the rules yeah. there. Yeah, it's really frowned it's upon like behavior. Banging the boss's yeah. daughter yeah. in <laughs> his office. Yeah, yeah, that sounds hot. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I kind of talked to the girl. I'm like. I you you gotta go I think, and she's like what? I'm like, I don't know. Power's gonna come home. I don't know. How, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't know what you. Uh, this, and she's like offended. She's like getting dressed, and I'm like, well, not now, but I just mean like before, like six or you know, he'd probably come back. And she's like, no, fuck you, loser. I'm fucking leaving, you know. So as she's walking out. She just calls me and goes, yeah, Bowers just pulled in as I'm leaving. So your whole plan backfired, you idiot. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, he knows he's going to he's going to march up there, kick me out. He's going to yell at me. He's going to fucking whatever. And I'm like, oh, I, this is my first time. I think I ruined my whole career is over and nothing happens. Doesn't doesn't say anything. Doesn't come upstairs. It's you know four in the morning or whatever. And so then I'm like, I'll just leave early before he's gone. 
or before he's up or something, I'll leave a note or whatever. So I wake up at like nine and he's just down in the living room watching TV. And I'm like, ah, I'll wait till he like goes out for lunch or something. Does not move the entire, doesn't even move from the couch except to go to the kitchen. Yeah. And like, I'm just like, well, got to face the music. This is, this is what I did. So I clean the room, make everything perfect, make the bed, killing it. I pack all my back, come downstairs. I'm like, all right, well, I got a, I got a 12 hour drive, so I got to get going. He's like, oh yeah, cool. Oh, hey. Um, and we start talking comedy and he goes, hey, next time you come back, this is the, these are the things we'd expect of you. Some new materials, blah, 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 blah. Um, talking for a half hour. I'm like, oh, I think I got it. Maybe he forgot or maybe he didn't really put two and two together. He just thought, whatever. Hey, um, I'm like uh, about to walk out the door. Hey, by the way, did you did you hook up with Desiree last night? I was like, no, I would never disrespect you or the club. You know, I would never do that kind of thing. And he goes, oh, I don't care. I go, what? He's like, yeah, she's hot. Like, you should you should try to fuck her. She seemed like she was into you a little bit. And I'm like, this has got to be like a trap. And I'm like, oh yeah, well maybe maybe next time. And he goes. He goes, I'm more likely to bring you back if you hook up with the waitresses. <laughs> like, I, I think I like to party. He's just a party guy. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, if you want to get rebooked next time, you better hook up with this Desiree. Still have a club? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the difference between yeah, 50, show up yeah. and go up, and uh, we have everything lined up yeah, very yeah, three yeah. months in advance, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, um, he drank all the profits away, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I go. Wait, you say I'm more likely to come back? I'm more likely to get bookings if I if I hooked up with Desiree. And he's like, Oh yeah, she's super hot. And I'm like, Well, I hooked up with Desiree, and I'm waiting for him to be like, Gotcha, bitch. Yeah. And he just is like, well, That's cool. Nice. She's fucking hot. It was yeah. it fun? And I'm like, This is fucking weird. This is like, Indiana. This is the opposite of everything I've ever <laughs> yeah. been told. And so, you know, um, so that's that whole, I guess, <laughs> you know, the, I think the, the story used to be more exciting, yeah, but it's been a few years since I've told to the it. general rule. Yeah. I mean, again, it was very like, I had that book that comics would sign and it was like, don't fuck the staff. And I'm like, well, that makes a lot of sense, <laughs> yeah. you know? And then you see this it one work out poorly in, for lots of your friends. Indiana, yeah. And then this guy was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> we like it. And we're still friends to this day. Um, he lives in L.A. now. but um, This story is just why you should sleep with a staff. At a you know, the, there are exceptions to every rule, I guess, is the uh, the the moral of the story. It's funny, man. You know, there are some, you know, there's an old saying, uh, there are comics who work on their act and comics who work on their waitresses. <laughs> The comics who work on their act eventually get all the waitresses they want. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't advise it. I don't think it's a good idea. But there are times where I see a waitress and I'm like, mm, you're flirting with me and this is probably, there's a, I'll tell you off air, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, there was just a, I don't care. Yeah. There was a there's a hot lady at laughs now who's been uh every once in a while she'll go like, Can I touch your hair? And I'm like, Will you stop trying to fuck me? Like I this uh, yeah. I, I'm going to I'm gonna Dave will let me get away. Dave will know. <sighs> <laughs> I can get away with it, but but the good boy in me is like just again, it's like that it's if you can just get home and jerk off, you're fine. <laughs> But if it's you just turning into like a Louis C.K. I'm telling you, it's tough out there. I, but you <laughs> you got to do the right thing. <laughs> you can't. You gotta. You you gotta be. Again, the same reason I've never really dated a comedian is like if if you ruin my happy place, that sucks for me. You oh know? yeah. This is where I work. Well, this, technically. I mean, you would could be, be contributing. I'm going to ruin her head. Yeah, yeah. no, well, like <laughs> both of you. Yeah. <laughs> Takes her, two. Her vagina is what yeah. I call her happy place. I'm going to ruin it. Um, but no, it, it, you know, again, like 
if I'm dating someone and we go to the same open mic and I'm doing a bit about her and then she's like, I don't know, like it's weird. you know, it's like, oh, I fucking, it's gonna, and then when it, when it ends poorly, like it usually does, I mean, just not a lot of relationships in general and amicably. No, that's why it's ending. Right. So, so, so you know, you just gotta play it, play it real careful. So well, shit, man. So I you're off we the just hook, hit lady. An hour. At, uh, at, at laughs. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it, but I'm thinking about it. Is there uh, anything you want to plug before we roll out of here? Uh, catch me on the Adam Tiller podcast. Um, no, just check out the specials online. YouTube is is great. Um, I gotta get, I gotta get, I gotta get posting more stuff. I kind of like, I like went viral on these apps, and then I like ran out of stuff to post, mm-hmm. and now I'm like. Well, now what? Got to go write some it, shit. Well, I've got the new hour, but it's not like... Not where you need it to it's be. It's not... I'm not taping it yet. Should, yeah. should, do I put it out before I finish it? Do I do more of these self... T- you know? Well, um, if people are watching us on YouTube, what's the name of your channel? Andrew J. Rivers. Instagram, YouTube, OnlyFans. Sold some dick pics. <laughs> you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. But. For sure, man. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, thanks anybody for watching. If you did enjoy the episode, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, notifications. And then also, if you have a question for Andrew or myself, uh, throw it in the comment section. And then I will uh, be checking this every 30 seconds, refreshing, and uh, and I better see some comments. Appreciate you coming on, buddy. Thanks for having me. Um, we are on Patreon, too. So if you can, please support us. Patreon. How much is the Patreon? Five bucks. Five bucks. You yeah. got five bucks. You spend more than that on Tinder swipes. You got five bucks to swipe right on Adam. Please do so. <laughs> Patreon.com slash FNF pod. As always, uh, follow us on Instagram at FNF pod for additional content. We are going to leave you with Jaga. What do they get for the Patreon? Is there bonus episodes? Just is there supporting just us. Just supporting you? Yeah. You got to throw in some... Uh, some uh, Extra kickers. I don't know. Yeah. You got to do like a a high episode, a mushrooms episode, something like you gotta that. Do yeah, a, uh, you got to do a, a gang bang with just all three. Corey and I being, should be the Patreon only for the time being. Just check it out. Just check it out. We're gonna leave you with Jaga. <laughs> all right, Jaga. I just make the waves. I don't write them. I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them. Why you wanna walk and talk just like them? I can't get caught up in all the hype and the excitement I just make the waves, I don't write them I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them Why you wanna walk and talk just like them? I can't get caught up in all the hype and the excitement Welcome to my wave pool, my wave pool 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 Welcome to my wave pool Welcome to my way, fool, my way, fool. Welcome to my way, fool.